everyone. Welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zerscher, and today I'm going to demonstrate a little button that I started to play with during my uh, last Stitch Along workshop, which was not included in the Stitch Along, but we did it as sort of an add-on. They're called Swern Kopf buttons. Knopf is actually the word for button in German, so that's a bit redundant, but a button that is also called a shirtlace button. I'm going to put some links of some German videos that I watched and also Gina B. Silkworks, who does a video for shirtlace buttons. All of these buttons uh, videos are for right-handed. I'm going to do this left-handed. This is a variation on a couple that I've seen posted other other places and I'll put all of those links below this video in the description section so that you can look at those as well. But for this one, this one really looks like a star. There are a lot of variations on each of these that you can do. I talk about it as I film um, the different possibilities, different threads, and I show you some of the ones that I've done so far. They're lots of fun. They're a little addictive and I hope you enjoy them. So come and join me and let's have some fun. So first off, before I get started, I'm just going to show you the different um, techniques. This is um, something that I've seen a couple of different people do. Uh, it's sort of a, a star looking thing. This one is more of a, I guess, a traditional, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, this one I just did with some metallic underneath and to sort of show you what that looks like. These three are done with these washers, these metal washers. Uh, Gina B, who, Gina Barrett, has, she's in the UK and her website, she sells these. Um, she sells a whole bunch of different things. She also sells things like this, button molds. Um, I haven't really played with these yet, but but I intend to. And But you can also, if you're not in the UK, you can get these on Amazon. Um, they're just, they're an O-ring washer, and I'm putting the, the um, I'll put the link below this video, just above the comments in the where it says description, and I'll put this link. But I found that I could use just a regular dorset button and uh, a dorset button ring. So I'm going to pull out a bunch of these. Uh, what I've found is that the, and I'll put the links for these as well, the one and a half inch ring, which is this one works nicely if you want it really big. And then the one and an eighth ring, this one, this is one and an eighth, works nicely as well. Uh, I haven't really played around too much with doing much smaller. So these are, these are kind of the sizes I've gone with so far. So the first thing you want to do is you want to pick out your ring. If you're using one of these, no problem. And and I'll I'll demonstrate on both. And if you're going to use a ring like this one, then this is just the regular ring that I use for dorset buttons. This is my beeswax and I do find it helps to just rub the beeswax all over the ring. I actually find it helpful to rub it on the metal one too, just because it gives you a little tackiness so that when you're having, when you're doing that initial bit of wrapping, it just gives you a little something, it gives the thread a little something to rest on and it doesn't slide around quite so easily. Um, you certainly can skip this step, but I just found it was easy to to do and it may, it's it felt like it was making life a little easier for me and i thought well why not then what you can do is just mark with a sharpie and 
a ruler. If you have Sue Spargo's Spoke Easy, I find this just such a great tool that she um, that she designed and, and created. It, it's just incredibly helpful. So what you do is you just place your your little thing. Uh, by the way, if you buy this, she has a piece of paper that goes on the back or maybe it's the front, I can't remember, and you just peel them off. It's just a protective layer for, for when, you you know, shipping and handling and all of that. So don't panic if you, if you do purchase these and it comes with that and you're thinking, well, what's that? Okay, so here's my six. One of the only things that's a little challenging about these um, is that it's the the thickness is pretty thick and so it's hard to find a pencil that that's got a tip that's long enough that it'll actually go in here uh if you have one of these these actually work pretty well so you can just mark it Okay, let's see if that actually... Yes, okay. So you can just see the little marks. And that's all I want. Now you want to choose your colors. I typically choose three. With this one, I did the initial wrapping with this very dark uh, violet color. And then I went ahead and did my burgundy. And then I tacked it down and, f and did my final wraps with the green. One of the things about these buttons are instead of starting your wraps the way you do a dorset button where you wrap around and then you fill in, you're doing the opposite. You end with wrapping the spaces in between. So I'm going to choose my colors and then I'm going to come back once I've figured that out. Okay, so I've picked out a couple of threads. I'm going to use my um, number 22 Pearl 8 from Steph Francis. I've got a black uh, from Valdani and... Um, this one, they're all pearl eights. I tried to do, I've tried other weights. You can do a five weight, um, at, but an eight weight is great for these. Here's my little ring. And I'm going to start with this one. Now I don't cut it off the spool. I leave it on the spool. So you're going to hold your thread near the top and you're going to go to the bottom and you're going to go up, so from 6 to 12, and I'm going to do two, three, you can do three wraps, you can do five wraps. I'm going to do five. Now I'm going to turn it clockwise keeping that thread under my finger and I'm going to go to this and I'm going on either side so I do right on the on the line and then I go either side and that's five and now I'm going to turn And I'm going to go right on that line. And then on either side of the thread, if it starts to pull away a little, that's okay. I can tweak it later. And there it is. I'm going to turn this over and what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip the end here. I'm going to thread a needle it doesn't have to be a 24 chenille it can be any needle And now,
I'm going to be pulling this and what I want to do is knot it. So I'm going to go under here and now I'm going to knot these, I'm going to tie a knot from the thread that I had hanging and the end. I'm going to do it a couple of times. And now I'm going to clip these. And I'm going to scoot these to where they're supposed to be. Just kind of tweak them to get them right. Now, I can use my Spoke Easy to just make sure that this is exactly where it's supposed to be. So, this one needs to go push down a little, and this one can be pushed down a little. And I'll check it again. And that's pretty good. I'm going to push this one just a little bit up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my green thread. I'm going to hold it up here. And I'm going to go from this end to this end. And again, I can do one, I can do two, I can do three. I'm going to do two. Then I turn it clockwise, and I go to this one. I'm going to turn it clockwise, and I'm going to do this one. clockwise, 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 and I've now done all of these so that each one has a green on either side of the black, right? And for my final bit, I'm just going to wrap twice in the middle. And that's it. So it should look like this. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to clip it. I'm going to find a needle. Thread my needle, and I'm going to find that other end, which has somehow disappeared, but I can see it. It's right here. I'm going to go in to some of these and pull this back out so that I've just kind of got it 
attached to something. And now I'm going to tie my knot. Now you can also do this without threading the needle. I've done it both ways. They both work. I do find that if I end up with a tiny little end like this one, I should have left a larger tail. It can be easier to do this with a needle on one end of it so I can get in here easier, but it isn't completely necessary. Okay, I'm going to tweak that later, but for right now, I'm going to cut these ends off. And now I'm just going to go and I'm going to make sure that these guys are paired up. If you only did one, then you're not going to have to worry about it, but I did two. Okay, so there it is. So now... I'm going to take my blue thread and I'm going to pull off a length of it. I'm doing about, I'm going to do about a yard and a half. It doesn't really matter. You can, if you run out, you can add a new length. It's not that big, it's not a big deal. I'm going to thread this. I'm going to knot the other end. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little tack stitch on all of these. You don't have to, but I kind of like the way that looks. So I'm going into the back and I want to come up close to the edge here of where I'm going to tack it down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up from behind. I'm going to leave this little loop and I'm going to go down on the other side and put my needle through the little loop so that it's secured. And I'm going to pull that. And now I'm going to go clockwise, kind of like I'm doing a little back stitch. And I want to make sure that I grab these, both threads. And this is one of the reasons I like to do this, because I like being able to secure these. And it's just an added thing that you can do to ensure that they're exactly where they should be. And I'm going to do that here. And do you see how here it's gone beyond? It's pulling in this one. I don't want that, so I'm going to make sure that I come back out. And I'm, I'm, I check, right? I'm always checking to make sure that I have this in the right place. So I'm going in here because these two should be paired up. Remember, I did two. Again, if you just have one, it, you're not going to have to remember that. And again, I want to make sure that I grab that pair. I also want to make sure that this is in the right position. Okay, go in here.
I also am making sure that I'm tweaking it so that it goes up where it should. Okay, I can see that this pair is together, so that's fine. I'm gonna grab it. one and here and the reason I'm grabbing that little loop is because if I don't do that I don't get as tight and it's neat a little tack, like I forgot to do it here. And it's not as neat. And I like having it pulled nice and tight and exactly where I want it. And so doing that little additional loop ensures that it will. This, putting my needle in like that. Here, I'm going to make sure I grab this one. Almost gone all the way around. I'm going to grab this one. And I'm back to this one. Right? So I can just come right into the back here. My needle in. And now I'm going to start doing my wraps. So that's what it looks like. Now you can also do a little tack here. Um, I did with this one. I kind of like it. It sort of gives it a little something. And I did it with this one as well. I'm going to leave this one and see whether I want to do that later. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start doing my wraps. So I come in here. And I've got a bit of space to cover, so it may require Certainly three, maybe four or five. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling that ridge so that it's going in the back and not showing. You need to be sure that you're pulling that ridge down because you can't, like a dorset button, you won't, um, as opposed to a dorset button where you could push the ridge after you've done it, with this, you really are going to have a harder time. So it's better to just push it now. I can squeeze one more in here. So I'm going to, I'm going to do five between each of these. OK. 
Okay, so there's my five. Now what I do is I turn this over and I'm gonna slip my needle underneath these stitches so that my thread is riding behind them. Like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna continue doing my wraps. So five. There's one. Two. Three. Four. It's five. If it's not quite filling it, I may have to rethink this, but I think that this one was a bit farther away. So I'm going to tweak it so it's a little bit like that. Okay. And now I'm going to continue. I need to go under these two spokes here, these two threads right here, the green. And I continue on my way. One. There's five. Again, I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to scoot my needle under these stitches. I find my pliers to be very helpful with this. And I pull it through. And I start doing my next group of wraps. And I'm going to do that all the way around. One thing I wanted to mention was with this one, which I'll, sh I'll show how to do this one. I did my initial wraps in this metallic because I wanted that middle to really pop and show. I did the same over here. This was a sort of experiment and I liked it. So I did a metallic and a perlite, and then I wrapped it in the metallic, and I wrapped these in metallic. I can show you how to do that in another video, but this one I'll come back to when I finished wrapping it all the way around. So there it is. I've done my wraps all the way around, and you can see the back. So now you can do variations on this. You can put a little cross stitch on each of these if you want, and then in the center. I've never done that, but I was thinking, why not? Why not? Why not try it? So I'm going to go in. If I want to do this cross stitch, I'm going to make sure I grab the right things. Yeah. 
And then I'm going to go into here. And again, I want to make sure I grab the right thing. And there's my little stitch and I can do another here. And then I'm going to grab this bit here. I'm going in here. And I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to go into here. This one. And I'm going to go into this one. And I'm going to grab this one. If I want to make sure that I'm really grabbing that one spot, I can always do that little thing that I did above. Okay, so there it is. And now I can go into this one here. and grab that. And so there it is. Um, remember this is the one that I didn't do that thing where I pull through the loop? So that's okay. I can, uh, I can actually go in now and kind of Pull this up a little, make sure it doesn't sag down on me. The point is you can tweak stuff. Just to make sure that's staying where I want it to, right up at the edge. I'm going to run my thread down into the center. Yeah, that's fine. Now, um, some people say tie a knot and clip it and don't have a thread running because if you want to add this to something and then you decide, no, I don't like it, and then you clip it, then it could unravel the whole thing. So, you know, you can do that. You can leave a thread in the back. You can do what I'm doing here and just kind of weave this in and then... You know, I figure... If I'm going to use this and I didn't want it, I've woven it in and knotted it so nicely, it won't matter. But there's that. 
And of course, you know, as I said, you can do variations. You can add more of the green. You can add more of the black, um, you know, but this is an idea. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do the same thing, but on a ring. And I'm going to use uh, this Steph Francis Pearl 8, this Valdani Pearl 8, and a Pearl 5 to do the tacking and the wrapping. So I'm going to start with the darkest, and then I'm going to go to the lighter, to this one. And then I'm going to tack and wrap with the Pearl 5. So again, I can take my Sharpie and I can take my little circle gauge and I can mark this. And now I'm going to do this right-handed. So for right-handed, I'm going to hold the tail to the left and I'm going to wrap this around with the same idea from bottom to top. And I'm going to wrap it two, three, four, and five. And then instead of turning it clockwise, I'm actually going to turn it counterclockwise. I keep that tail. And I'm going to go right to the line, bottom to top, side to side. bottom to top, side, I'm going to clip this off, I'm going to tweak these, and I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to clip this off. I'm going to thread up a needle and I'm going to tie a knot in the back. So now I take my lighter color, holding the tail to the left, going from bottom to top. So one, two, three, One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And now remember how I do the middle. So one, two, three, one, two, 
That's how it looks. Okay, I'm going to do the same as I did before. I'm going to clip this off. I'm going to put a needle on it. I'm going to tie a knot in the back and I'm going to bring my other, I'm going to cut a length of thread of my, of this color and I'm going to thread it up and I'm going to start doing my tacking. All right, so I've got my other color, my lighter color thread it up and I'm going to start tacking down these edges. Um, if you're right-handed, you're going to be going counterclockwise. Okay, so here we are. I've tacked everything down. I'm not going to tack anything down in here. I'm going to do my wraps first and see how I feel. So if you're right-handed, you're going to be wrapping clockwise, right? And you're going to go under here and through the loop, just like you would a dorset button. Right, and you're going to count how many wraps. Um, I'm probably going to want at least five in here, but it's going to depend on your thread weight. It's going to depend on the size of your ring. It's going to depend on, you know, it's going to depend on all of that. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to wrap everything and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so here it is. And, um, I've kind of tweaked it and it's almost, it's, it's pretty close to being, you know, now I could have done a, um, this dark part I could have done here. Um, that would have given it a completely different look. So I'm going to leave this free. I'm not going to tack it down the way I did this one, but you can see the difference between the dorset button ring and this flat washer. It is different. Um, I like both. They're pretty cool. I hope you found this helpful and thanks so much for watching. Until next time, let's, uh, let's keep stitching together.